I'd have months of weird stomach pains that the doctors couldn't explain. And, you know, at first they tried explaining it with lactose intolerance, and then they attributed it to just stress, and then eventually they thought it was appendicitis. So, you know, I went to the hospital to deal with that, and that's when they found out that it was actually fibrolamellar. It was kind of scary to be diagnosed with cancer at the age of 12, but it was nice to finally know the explanation for all of these stomach pains I'd been having. There was no specific chemotherapy for fibrolamellar, so they resected most of my liver, and thankfully they were able to get out the entire tumor. This gave me a specific focus. Instead of using science as just something I would learn in class, it was actually a way to try to answer this question, a way to try to understand what this disease was. She was always interested in the world around her, which included science. I remember in kindergarten, her going around and sort of probing where in her kindergarten room were there the most germs. But it just showed a curiosity about the world. When I was first diagnosed, I had no idea what cancer was. So I did a bunch of research online, and I wrote this whole paper on how the immune system actually tries to fight off these tumor cells. And that made me even more interested in trying to study this disease itself. When I said I actually want to research my own cancer, he was beyond thrilled and said, what can I do to help? How can we make this a reality? I thought it was a great idea. For the previous year or so, I had been working together with her surgeon in which we were trying to characterize some of the basic cell biology of the tumor. And the thought of coming in and going after the genomics of it just made complete sense. I was kind of hesitant at first to work with him just because, I mean, what, you know, teenage girl wants to spend all her time working with her father. But it's actually been a pretty good experience. He's been very good about letting me have my space. When she came down to the lab, and I set her up with two of the surgical fellows, basically sat them down in a room. I said, okay, Alana's got an idea. Let her pitch it to you. If you're interested, you want to work with her, you know, great. And we talked, and I realized, okay, he's not going to be, you know, completely in my face. And throughout the entire process, it's actually been really great to work with him because it's really interesting to be able to go home and talk with your father about the science. This has been a real collaboration. It's been a chance to really actively engage in building and developing something together. My background was not in cancer genomics, so I was as new to this field as Alana was. There was never really one moment where I thought, this, this is it, because you know, when you first get a result that something is in every patient, you think, oh, it could just be an artifact of the way the sequencing was done or the way, or of any step along the process. And so I never really was sure that we had something until, you know, we kept doing different tests. And eventually, after a while, I started to realize, okay, this actually could be a potential driver for this cancer. Also, I was pretty surprised in that a lot of the programs I worked with were just open source, completely available to everyone, and, you know, every week I'd go on and I'd have to re-download it because someone else had made a different update, and all of a sudden there was a new feature I could use. And that's great that, you know, instead of wanting to keep their programs to themselves and just do their own research, they have making all of these available to everyone. And so you can have such a collaborative, open project like this. I feel like the excitement of publishing in science hasn't properly hit me yet. I don't know, we're still kind of waiting until this can actually actively help people, you know, because this could potentially lead to diagnostics or treatment. And so I feel like once those become realities, that's when it'll finally hit, like the magnitude of what's been going on will finally hit me. With all of the media interviews and public attention, it's been kind of weird, but it's, it's exciting, and it's, it's nice to be able to share the story. Fibro Meller is a pretty small community, and so I've gotten to know so many patients through different organizations and different events, but there are so many people around the world who don't know about any of these communities, and they've been reaching out to me, and it's so great to be able to talk to them. It's been giving them hope, which is amazing. I think if we encourage kids to just ask questions about the world around them, they will find the questions that resonate with them. None of us are omniscient, none of us know all the answers, and therefore having an environment where people are free to question, to challenge, and offer new directions, 
um, in a non-challenging way is what helps science move forward. I've had parents talk to me, just email me saying, wow, your story is so interesting. I'm sharing this with my kid and you know they've always been interested in science, but now I'm kind of encouraging them to actually pursue it because I realize that kids actually have the opportunity to do this. I've been fortunate in that I've grown up in a world where I've been encouraged to pursue science and pursue anything I want. You know, I've always thought of him as this brilliant mad scientist. And now when we go home, we'll actually have a discussion together about the science that we're doing. I'm going to miss her when she goes to college. But, you know, hopefully some point in the future she'll take me on, maybe I'll do a sabbatical in her lab. <laughs>